Hello? Scripture mentions there's a wide road that leads to destruction or the lake of fire or the second death. It also mentions another road it called the narrow way or the narrow path or the straight path that leads to the narrow gate, the straight and narrow. So the question is, how do we know which path or which road we're on? So it becomes vitally important for us not to only understand this concept, but to know if we're on the wide road that leads to destruction and annihilation, or are we on the straight and narrow road that leads through the narrow gate into Yahuwah's arms. So the easiest way to determine which road we're on is to compare our life or our lifestyle with those of the majority. In other words, we compare find out if we fit into the majority rule or the minority. So, let's go ahead and have a conversation about that. Um, the majority, by far, the majority of people in the world, at least in our country, the United States of America, uh, observe and practice the holidays. And these holidays are based on pagan origins and they're full of pagan rituals. Uh, disguised, renamed, practiced differently perhaps, but nevertheless their origins are from pagan background. And since Yahuwah does not change, anything that was a pagan holiday or tradition or ritual or religion a couple thousand years ago, which he would still consider a pagan holiday today. So the majority observes and practices the holidays and they're controlled exclusively by the calendar. The calendar tells them when to celebrate these particular holidays, when to buy a present for someone, when to tell someone you love them, you know, when to honor your mother and your father, you know, so when to uh, buy your sweetheart a box of chocolates or a bouquet of roses, perhaps, or tell her a poem. Um, so they try to dictate to you when and how you are supposed to celebrate these ritual or holidays and traditions. So the majority celebrates these holidays. Uh, there's a remnant or a minority out there that do not. Okay? So the majority celebrates holidays. The minority does not. Uh, re, uh, Trinity. The majority of Christians out there uh, believe and teach Trinity. They claim that Yahuwah is three deities wrapped up in one some sort of a three-headed monster, if you will. Some even sharply divide him into three or more deities. And somehow they all are in sync uh, with their thoughts and actions are in sync. Um, so the majority of Christians believe in Trinity. The minority of believers 
believe in monotheism or that Yahuwah is one. And Yahusha is Yahuwah incarnated because the son, Yahuwah, came down. He formed a body for himself or a vessel made of flesh. And it was brought forth through a virgin woman through her loins and out her womb is flesh. The flesh would soon die. Um, Yahuwah would not die, of course, because he is spirit and cannot die. But the fleshly vessel or the incarnation which Yahuwah chose to call son for our sakes so that we may believe would die and did die and was resurrected after three days and three nights and put on an immortal body which is Yahuwah Yahuwah's immortal body okay uh, so the minority believes that the monotheism Yahuwah is one although he told us that from his own mouth that he was one uh, the minority believes that and the majority believes in the Trinity, which has pagan origins, okay? Which can be traced back roughly around 4th, 5th century when it entered Christianity, if not much later. I mean, it would enter Christianity then it was minor or very, very subtle compared to, to the radical Trinity of today, all right? Big difference. So it's progressed and mutated into something that was is wouldn't even be recognized by the fourth or fifth century church fathers of Christianity. They would probably uh, run from today's Trinity uh, teachings. But anyway, uh, so there we go. And uh, so now uh, the cross. In the in statues and the steeples and the obelisks, uh, holy water, candles, bells, uh, these type of this type of ritual stuff, religious ritual uh, tools or images, is used by the majority. You know, crescent moons, stars, astrology statues, crosses, big time, you know, stars, this kind of stuff. It's used by the majority. Uh, the minority doesn't use this stuff. They, but they do recognize the menorah as being representing uh, Yahusha HaMashiach. So the minority recognizes the uh, uh, menorah and the majority recognizes uh, the cross the statues the uh, all the pagan stuff okay again so the majority wears crosses around their neck the minority does not uh, true name the name of uh, our creator and the name of our deliverer the majority uh, believe that call him uh, Jehovah and the deliverer uh, Jesus Christ or the J man as I like to refer to him as uh, and the uh, minority calls him by his true Hebrew name which is for the creator is Yahuwah and for the deliverer it is Yahusha so minority uses Yahuwah and Yahusha, and the majority by far is programmed to use a fake or false Greek name, which is actually pronounced Jesus or Hail Zeus. Jesus. That's how you actually pronounce it. So they're not even pronouncing it correctly, really. So there you go. And then uh, so then the vast majority uh, believe in men's doctrines. They practice man-made religions. Okay, 
uh, the false doctrines that they practice are based on no laws, no penalties. Uh, we're incapable, us human beings are incapable of being lawful uh, citizens, you know, and uh, we can't obey 10 simple commands is the way they teach it. And so they had to be taken out of the way. And so the false doctrine is based on belief only. You only have to believe. You don't have to obey Yahuwah or his commands anymore. Uh, and they also teach once saved, always saved. Once saved, always saved. Uh, which means once you accept or believe in Yahusha, or the J-Man as they call him, um, once you've done that and you've been water immersed in the, in the name of the J-Man, then you can never ever lose your salvation no matter what you do. Matter of fact, they say that you're saved right there and then immediately. You can take a pen and write down that date and that time precisely is the date and uh, is the time period that you were saved, okay? Uh, the minority believes that uh, your belief must be proved by your obedience. So you must believe, but you also have to uh, obey. You know, you take the pledge to obey Yahuwah uh, for the rest of your life. And so it becomes a race of endurance to the end. So that's what the minority believes. In other words, amuna, amuna, belief, uh, belief with obedience, amuna, amuna. Okay, that's the Hebrew word. So the minority believes in amuna. The majority believes in false doctrine of you. All you have to do is believe, like the devils do, and they tremble. But they, you know the. Christians don't even tremble. They just believe. At least the, the devils tremble because they know they're lying. <laughs> you know, they know it's a lie, so at least they tremble. Christians don't even tremble. They lie and like it. You know, they don't even care. They're not scared at all about lying. Ugh. And uh, one saved always says yeah, it can't be true because if you start sinning or you go back into the pig pen after you've tasted the goodness of the Ruach, um, and, and become recontaminated with the world or stained by the world again, there remains no blood sacrifice, no blood offering for you. you know. So the minority doesn't believe that, but it, obviously the majority does. Um, there, the way that, that we're immersed, okay, uh, the majority believes you go to church and then when you decide that you want to uh, commit yourself to believing in uh, the Creator uh, and what, uh, you know, their Messiah, what the Messiah did for you, then you go to the, up into a baptism inside the church on the altar of the church and you let your pastor call on the name of uh, the, uh, the false name of the, of the deliverer, okay, and then he dunks you down in the water, brings you back up, and tells you to raise your hands after he does it. So it's basically he runs the show. He's the one that's calling on the deliverer and for your, uh, you know, your deliverance and the remission of your sins. Um, like he's better than you or something. I'm, I'm, I don't understand why they do it that way, but that's what they do. That's what the majority does. They let their leader or their teacher uh, call out to the deliverer for remission of their sins. Okay. The minority does not. They call out with their own mouth. They speak it out there. They ask for forgiveness from their own mouth. They call on the true name of the deliverer with their own mouth, Yahushua HaMashiach. And they dunk themselves under the water and they know that they're putting their flesh to rest. Um, and they come back up out of the water and walk in the spirit and the truth with Yahushua spirit and his righteousness in us after he dwells us at that point his righteousness in us 
becomes our righteousness. Okay. So that's what the minority does. They, they call on the name of the deliverer with their own mouth. The majority allows their teacher okay, to call on the, uh, the deliverer for deliverance of the one that they're immersing. Okay, uh, and so uh, uh, there we have the you know the biggest uh, differences. You know, I mean the two categories of that what falls into the majority or the wide road, okay, which is the world, and the narrow road or the narrow way, okay, that leads to life. All right, so. It, apparently, if you're on, the, if you're with the majority, if you're following that majority group, you're on the wrong road. If you're on the little straight, straight road and the narrow road, where maybe it's hard that you can't even go to the left or to the right, man, you got to make sure your feet are straight on, or you're going to step off that path that's so narrow. You know, you're on the right path, and. Uh, no, I think we can uh, read some scripture and uh, we can confirm that this is true. Um, uh, and, and on the, the immersion, too, uh, before we move on, I'd just like to say that, uh, uh, you know, infant baptism or sprinkling you know, with some wand or something, sprinkling water on your head or something, you know, that's not the correct way to do it either. But that's, the majority does do that, too. So if you're doing infant baptism or sprinkling, uh, you're in the majority. Because only a minority actually go under the water, total submersion. All right. Um, and we, we can, we can uh, let's read some, a little bit of scripture here to back up what I just said. Uh, we'll go to Matthew 7 verse 12 start in verse 12 therefore whatever you wish men to to do to you do also to them for this is the torah and the prophets enter in through the narrow gate yahushua is the narrow gate but enter into in through the narrow gate because the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction and there are many who enter in through it many who enter in through it <clears throat> because the gate is narrow and the way is hard pressed which leads to life and there are few there are few who find it so you have to be in the minority there are few that find it but beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are savage wolves. By their fruits you shall know them. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every good tree yields good fruit, but a rotten tree yields wicked fruit. A good tree is unable to yield wicked fruit, and a rotten tree to yield good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter into the reign of the Shemayim, but he who is doing the desire of my Father in the Shemayim. Many shall say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in your name, and cast out demons in your name, and done many mighty works in your name? And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who work lawlessness, or who is out, you know, that's, they're without the Torah, they're working lawlessness. Uh, this verse seems to imply that they, they, this group of people must be believers, because they're calling him master, master. So they must be believers. It's not a group of atheists, for sure. And uh, they're saying that, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done mighty works in your name? Apparently, uh, 
they think that they've been calling on his name and obviously they haven't been calling on the true name because he doesn't know them. He didn't recognize them. He didn't hear them because they weren't calling out his real name. They were calling on a different name so it didn't get his attention because he says, depart from me, you who are work lawlessness. I never knew you. See that? So I don't think they're calling on the right name like they think they are. Okay, let's get, go over to Matthew twenty-two eleven. And when the sovereign came in to view the guests, he saw there a man who had not put on a wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the sovereign said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and throw him out into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of the teeth, for many are called but a few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. That's an eye-opener. The guy didn't have the spirit of Yahusha in him. He wasn't calling on the proper name to get the, in order to get the spirit. Um, many, for many are called, but few are chosen. Okay? Don't forget, you know, the first time around uh, when Yahuwah destroyed the world with water, only eight people out of the entire world was, was saved from that water, delivered through the water. Uh -huh. They were delivered through the water, only eight. So, you know, better get this majority thing out of your mind. If you think that you're going to be delivered or found right because you're attending, you're, you're with a majority or a, a huge crowd or throng of people versus a couple over here that you look at, oh, look at them idiots over there by themselves. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm over here with a million people. They're with a hundred people. You know, I, we have to be right because the majority's always right. That's not true. Matter of fact, the majority usually 99% of the time is always wrong. So better retrain your your mind, uh, your train your retrain your thought. Well, if you think you're safe because you're in a majority, you're fooling your own heart. Let's continue on. Let's go to Romans nine twenty two or twenty seven. Romans nine twenty seven. And Yashayahu or Isaiah cries out on behalf of Israel. Through the number of the children of Israel, lo, the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant shall be delivered. For he is bringing a matter to an end and is cutting it short in righteousness, because Yahuwah shall cut short a matter on the earth. So, there we go again. Just a remnant will be delivered. Out of the sands of the seas, the number is as great as the sands of the seas. Only a remnant will be delivered. We're going to go over here to uh, Revelations uh, 12. Revelations 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was thrown out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who leads all the world astray. He was thrown to the earth, and his angels were thrown out with him, or his malachim. Skip down to saying chapter 12, down to verse 13. Now when the dragon saw that he had been thrown to the earth, he persecuted the Asha, or woman, who gave birth to the male child. And the Asha, which is Israel, the male child, of course, is Yahusha. And the Asha was given two wings of a great eagle. That could be the United States of America right there being prophesied. The Asha, which is Israel, was given two wings of a great eagle. That could be America. To fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nursed for a time and times and half a time. That's three and a half years from the presence of the serpent. The serpent's the devil. And out of his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river after the woman to cause her to be swept away by the river. Okay, so uh, 
the waters uh, and river is probably, uh, you know, could be meant, you know, the, the, the crowds, the population, or uh, the water, and then the river possibly is the pressure and the false teachings, traditions, religions of the world. Okay? Took them away and, and uh, got, they're in the delusion. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the river which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged. He was wrapped, man. He was enraged. He wanted to hurt somebody with the woman, with Israel. And he went to fight with the remnant, the remnant of her seed, those guarding the commands of Yahuwah, the Ten Commandments, and possessing the witness of Yahushua HaMashiach. So there you go. There's the majority. because the, the, I mean the minority. Because the majority doesn't obey the commands of Yahuwah. Matter of fact, they tell you the whole the whole Tanakh or the whole Old, Old Testament is abolished. You know, so they, they're not about to obey the commands of Yahuwah. And to, and to their mind, all you have to do is believe. You don't have to obey anything anymore. But this right here says... That the remnant of her seed, the old guarding the commands of Yahuwah. So that's the minority. There's no doubt about it. It's not the majority, that's for sure. Uh, Revelations 14. And I looked and I saw a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written upon their foreheads. <coughs> And I heard a voice out of the heaven like the voice of many waters and like the voice of loud thunder. And I heard the sound of harpists playing their harps. And they sang a renewed song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one was able to learn that song except the 144,000 who are redeemed, redeemed from the earth. They are those who were not defiled with women for they are maidens, they are maidens or virgins. There are those following the Lamb wherever he leads them on. They were redeemed from among men, being first fruits, first fruits to Yahuwah and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no falsehood, 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 falsehood. For they are blameless before the throne of Yahuwah. Boy, this is a very interesting verse right here. It's a, it's a, it's a remnant. The first fruits uh, in, in Israel were only 10% of the crop, you know, the, the first cutting, you know, the first harvest. So that's not a lot. You know, that's not a lot. 10%. So 144,000. That's it. Maybe possibly that's the bride that's still alive at the time of the sec his second coming. That's what I think it is. But it very well could be the entire number of the ones that are, have fallen asleep and are resurrected in the first resurrection combined with the ones that remain alive at that particular time. And that 144,000 is caught up into the clouds with Yahushua. He's descending down upon Jerusalem on the Mount of Olives at his second return. That's what the minority believes. And this figure here, 144,000, is an absolute minority, a remnant. Okay? So the, uh, here we find out, you know, it's in the majority ain't going nowhere. The million, a group of million ain't going nowhere. It's going to be the little group, 144,000, it's going, uh, going to be resurrected and given immortal bodies, and being caught up with Yahushua as he returns. Uh, Revelations 14, uh, 12. Here is the endurance of the set apart ones. Here are those guarding the commands of Yahuwah and the belief of Yahusha. And I heard a voice out of the heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the master from now on. The reason they're blessed, the ones that die in the master, because they had the, the indwelling spirit of Yahusha in them when they die. So they're sleeping and awaiting his, his return. And that's going to be the first resurrection group. So they're blessed because the second death holds no, has no power over them. Okay. So 
And let's go to Revelation 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from the heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues, because her sins have piled up to reach the heaven. And Yahuwah has remembered her unrighteousness. <clears throat> so he's calling somebody out of something. Okay? So it's a big group of some people he's calling his people out of. So that's another remnant, you know, of or, or a minority. It's it definitely uh, is insinuating a minority to come out of a larger group. Okay? So, you know, this, this, that's pretty good stuff right there that's, that's proving that, uh, uh, you know, that the, the minority is the ones that are right. It's not the majority that's right, but it's the minority that's going to be found right. All right. So you want to be on the straight and the narrow. You want to be part of the minority group, not the majority group. Um, <clears throat> Listen to this. Yahuwah has no religion, first of all. We've got to get that through our heads. Yahuwah has no religion. Religions and traditions are man made doctrine. They come from man. Man's made up dreams, made up, um, you know, uh, ideology in theology, whatever you want to call it, but it's made up by man. Isn't it? Yahuwah never made, told them to do that stuff. Man just started doing all that on their own, out of their own devices, out of their own little inventions in their minds, okay? So Yahuwah has no religion. Yahuwah has no religion. Now, Christianity, the people that have belonged to a group called Christianity, okay, we'll even separate Catholicism for you, okay? Uh, if we really, that's Catholicism and Christianity, same thing. But just just to save argument, we'll, we'll divide them. So listen to this: Christianity has 2.04 billion followers, billion with a B. Islam, in general speaking. General, in general speaking, really all mu all Muslims are probably you know, I mean ninety over ninety percent of all Muslims are Islam. But just generally speaking, Islam has one point two two six billion followers. One point two two six billion. Catholicism, <clears throat> if you pull it out of Christianity, has one point one four two billion followers. Okay, 1.142 billion. Hinduism, and speaking in general, again, has 828 million followers. Buddhists, or Buddhism, in general speaking, general terms, has 367 million followers. Seventh day Adventists have 16 million followers. Judaism, or Orthodox, Orthodox Judaism has 14.5 million followers. Jehovah Witnesses has 4 million followers. Now does this sound as though these man-made up religions and their members are on the straight and narrow or the, or the narrow path? or the way that leads to the narrow gate? Or are these people on the wide road of the world that leads to destruction? That many people. I'd say they're all on the wide road. I mean, it's common sense. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. So religion and tradition may seem right to a man, especially because we've been brainwashed and programmed with it from birth. You know, seems right. <clears throat> but in the end, it's the way that leads to death, to destruction. It's the wide road. The world is the wide road. If you're following the majority or the world, 
you are on the path of destruction, the wide road. Okay, it's going to lead to the lake of fire, which is the second death. There will be wailing and gnashing of the teeth, folks. A lie doesn't become truth. Wrong doesn't become right. And evil doesn't become good. Just because it's accepted by a majority. Regardless of where we start reading in scripture, one thing is for certain. The readers of this book are intended to keep the commandments. In the Old Testament, Old Testament, it says in Deuteronomy 11, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if ye, if ye obey the commandments of Yahuwah, your Elohim, which I command you this day. And then in the New Testament, in Revelation 22, 14 says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in, through the gates into the city. Blessed are they that do his commandments. So the minority are doing his commandments, the majority are being lawless and teaching lawlessness. All right. That's a doctrine of demons, is what it really is. Once saved, always saved. That's a doctrine of demons. And so is all you have to do is believe. You don't have to obey any laws because the, the Torah has been abolished or the law has been done away with, put away. That's a doctrine of demons. And they know they're lying because it says in there, uh, you know, if you believe Yahuwah is one, you do well. For the demons believe and tremble because they know they're lying. God to obey Yahuwah, and they know it, man. They know they're not obeying him, and they're in big trouble. That's why they're trembling, because they believe him, because they know he's real. They don't have to believe by not seeing. They've seen him. They know he's real. <laughs> so they tremble at his name. Um, 7,000 times the name, just short of 7,000 times, the name of Yahuwah was replaced in then scriptures or B I B L E with the labels L O R D and G O D or Lord and God. You know, these are these are titles. Okay, they're titles. They're not a name. You know, they're not pronouns or proper names. You know, they're titles. Uh, Yahuwah tells us in Scripture many times, I am Yahuwah, and that is my name forever. He'll be known by that name forever. You know, So they removed his name 7,000 times. Don't you see a problem with that? What are they trying to hide? What have they got against the true name of our Creator? Man, they don't want you saying it or knowing it. You know, really think about that really hard. Like I said, the majority doesn't call on his true name. The my, a minority out there, there is an awakening, awakening in this end times. Did you know that? There is an awakening. You know, who has woke up the Nazarene? Okay, and they're and they're telling the truth, and they're they're exposing the falsehood and the lies of the devil and the system of the beast. So open your ears and eyes and listen to the Nazarene. The minority calls on the true name, Yahuwah, the Creator, and Yahusha, the Deliverer. I am your Deliverer. The majority calls on the false program names. I left the church. <clears throat> Since I left the church, I started and started following the truth, which is Yahusha. He is the truth. I have nothing in common with the church anymore, and neither should you. Because it's obviously been exposed as futility, falsehood, that and, who, and, and the leaders teach lawlessness. It's going to get you burnt, folks. You're, you're going to get burnt. You better come out of that, that mess. It's a mess. Christianity's a mess. Every religion in the world's a mess. None of them are right. None of them. 
We're supposed to be in a loving relationship with our Creator. And He made the way to recounsel us back to Him after the fall of Adam and Chela by, the, by Yahusha. He, he, he made the way back to recounsel. Yahuwah was in the was in Mashiach, okay, counseling himself, uh, recounseling us back to himself. Um, the majority don't obey the, the commandments at all. The Ten Commandments or the Covenant of Love or the Renewed Covenant, they don't obey, obey it at all. You know, they blow it off like it's abolished. A minority obeys the Ten Commandments and the Covenant of Love, and they enter into the Renewed Covenant, through the Blood Covenant. They enter into it and engraft into Israel and obey their husband. Okay, including number four. Remember Shabbat, guarded as Kadesh. Uh, Sabbath is the covenant, the Sabbath day, Shabbat is a covenant forever. It's forever and ever and ever. We're going to be obeying that and observing that even in the kingdom reign. <clears throat> Ezekiel 20, I mean, uh, Exodus 31, it says, And the children of Israel shall guard the Sabbath to perform the Sabbath throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant between me and the children of Israel. It is a sign forever. So the Sabbath is the sign of the everlasting covenant. For in six days Yahuwah made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And in Ezekiel 20, 12 we read, And I also gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between them and me, to know that I am Yahuwah who sets them apart. So you're set apart. So if you're set apart, that means you're a minority. You're set apart from, a, from, a, from everything else. Your hand picked and set up on high on the high, on the top shelf. Okay, you're a remnant. You're the possession, his possession, uh, treasured possessions. You know that right there says that you're set apart from the rest of the world. So if you're in the world and majority, uh, you're gonna be you're part of the wrong. The the remnant, the set apart ones, or the minority are the right ones. They're they're the ones that are gonna be found righteous. Uh, like I said, the, immers the immersion, you know, is another big deal. If you've been baptized or immersed in the name of the J-Man, you know, J-E-S-U-S, -S, Jesus, to wash away your sins, uh, you've, been, you've been baptized or immersed in the Greek name. It's transliterated from Isus or uh, uh, Jesus, Jesus. It starts with, it was originally written with an I. I E S O U S is what, is what you're going to find in the first copy, of, first translation of the English version <coughs> called the KJV. Uh, but this name, Jesus, has no meaning in Hebrew. So if you, if you back translate it into Hebrew, it don't mean nothing. But if you take just the Zeus off of it, Okay, and, and, and try to find it. You can find a sort of a meaning for that, which means horse. You know, horse. Uh, actually, in Latin, it means pig. And that's really crazy. But uh, if that's what you've been done to, yeah, if you've been baptized in the name of the J-Man, <clears throat> you know, it's time to be re-immersed. You know, you need to be re-immersed, and you need to use call on the name of Yahushua with your own mouth. Be re-immersed into the real Hebrew name of our Deliverer, his real true name, Yahusha. Call on Yahusha. Very easy to say. Yahusha. That's it. It's almost like Yahoo, you know, the website. Yahoo, then just a uh, 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 shah on the end of it, or ah uh, for Yahua. Yahusha. Yahoo. Ah, just adding a little bit at the end, that's all. It's not that hard to say. Yahuwah makes covenants. Man creates religions and traditions. Jeremiah 31 says, 
See, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I shall make a renewed covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not like the covenant I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. By covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, declares Yahuwah. For this is the covenant I shall make with the house of Israel after those days, which is the end times, declares Yahuwah. I shall put my Torah in their inward parts, and write it on their hearts, and I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. That's the renewed covenant, folks. Uh, the question then becomes, uh, is the question is not, are you a Christian, okay, <laughs> or are you a Jew, or are you Islam, okay, or are you Catholic? The question now becomes, are you Israel? You have to engraft into Israel, rulers with Yah, princes with Yah, that's what Israel means. It's not, it doesn't mean you're a Jew, okay? <clears throat> Jews, actually, Yehudim, are just one tribe out of the twelve. <clears throat> Israel is Yahuwah's chosen people, his elect, his bride. Israel's always been the chosen of Yahuwah. He's, they've always been his people, Israel. Israel. Christ knows Christians. Uh, it comes from Christine or Christinos or Cretan. Okay. <clears throat> it's a congenital idiot. That's what the uh, encyclopedia says it is. A Cretan or a Christian is a congenial idiot from the Alps, somewhere in France, I guess. Uh, Cretan was at first used in pity, only later uh, was it used Christ, Christian, Christine, Christian, uh, Chromiac, Chrome, Chromium, you know, that's where it comes from. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a derogatory, derogatory uh, label, really, it's, it's not a good label at all. Uh, so be careful, I mean, uh, you know, look it up. You know, I wouldn't want to be called Christian after knowing that. Look it up. <clears throat> uh, silly little Christians, you know, silly Christians. Look, your calendar is pagan. The one that teaches you and reminds you to, to obey and practice the pagan rituals and holidays, okay? Uh, is a pagan calendar. Christmas, whose originally was the winter solstice. Easter was Astara, the spring equinox. Halloween was Samhain, Samhain. Valentine's Day was Embiac. May Day was Biotain. Tuesday is Tars Day. Wednesday is Woden, Woden's or Odin's Day. Thursday is Thor's Day. Friday was Freya's Day. Saturday is Saturn's day. Sunday is the sun's day. You know, the sun worshiper Apollo or Zeus. And Monday was the moon's day to worship the moon. It gets a pagan. It's a pagan calendar. The whole thing, you know, is nasty. Um, and that's how they control you. you. Get rid of that calendar, they lose control of you. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, further evidence is, is the pagan gods. You were all born on December 25th. But December 25th is not the day Yahushua was born. He was born in, during uh, the, the Feast of Tabernacles in, in the fall of the year. Okay. Um, but to, December 25th has always been observed by the pagans. That's a high, high pagan day. Okay. Tammuz, uh, he was born uh, on December 25th, 2600 B.C. Krishna of India was born on 25th. Uh, Mithra of Persia was born on 25th, December 25th. Horus of Egypt, December 25th. Buddha of India, December 25th. You know, Hercules and Zeus, the son of Zeus, was born uh, December 25th. 
you know, uh, uh, Odin or Adrius of Egypt uh, was born December 25th, and a bunch more. I mean, he just goes on and on and on. It's nasty. I, I can't stand to say it. So I'm going to stop right there. <clears throat> Ishtar, who is Easter, it's pronounced Easter now. Uh, Easter was originally the celebration of Ishtar, the uh, Azrian, Assyrian, and Babylonian goddess of fertility and sex. Her symbols are are the egg and the and the bunny. Now uh, they were they were and still are fertility and sex symbols. Sex symbols. Or did you actually think eggs and bunnies had anything to do with the resurrection? After Constantine decided to Christianize the empire, Easter was changed to represent the J-man, J-E-S-U-S, or Jesus, but at its roots, it's all about celebration of Easter, Ishtar, and fertility and sex. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah is one. Isaiah 42, 8. I am Yahuwah, that is my name, and my esteem I do not give to another, nor my praise to idols. Isaiah 43, 10. You are my witnesses, declares Yahuwah. And my servant whom I have chosen so that you know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no all for him, nor after me there is none. I, I, Yahuwah, and, beside, uh, and besides me, I am Yahuwah, and besides me there is no deliverer. Uh, verse 25. I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and remember your sins no more. Isaiah 44, 6, Thus said Yahuwah, sovereign of Israel, and his Redeemer, Yahuwah Zaboeth, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no Elohim. 44, 8, Do not hear, nor be afraid. Have I not since made you hear and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there an Allah besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. 45.5 I am Yahuwah and there is none else. There is no Elohim besides me. I gird you, though you have not known me, so that they know from the rising of the sun to its sitting that there is none but me. I am Yahuwah, and there is none else, forming light and creating darkness, making peace and creating evil. I, Yahuwah, do all these. You read the book of Isaiah through there, man. If you come out of that book and thinking Yahuwah is anything else but one, I don't know how you did it. <coughs> Zechariah. 12, 9. And it shall be in that day that I speak to seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I shall pour on the house of Dude and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem a rook of favor and prayers. And they shall look on me, whom they pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. And they shall be in bitterness over him as a bitter, the bitterness of a firstborn. 13, 6, and one shall say to him, What are these wounds in your hands? And he shall say, Because I was wounded at home by those who love me. Wow, huh? Read the book, John. Uh, if you read John, the entire book of John context, ain't no way you're going to be able to come out of there without believing you who is nothing but one. Uh, if you do, I don't know how you're doing it. <clears throat> John 12. Verse 45, and he who sees me, sees him who sent me. That's pretty plain. John 14. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Yahuwah said to him, have I been with you so long, and you have not known me, Philip? 
He who has seen me has seen the Father. And how do you say, show us the Father? That's crazy. I mean, that's that's pretty plain to me. Uh, I don't know how, how plainer he can get on that, folks. Revelations 1. I am the Aleph and the Tall, beginning and end, says Yahuwah, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Then I heard a voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the leaf and the tall, the first and the last, and write in the book what you see, and send it to the seven assemblies of Asia. And I turned to see the voice which spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, or a menorah, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the son of Adam, that's Yahushua, dressed in a robe down to the feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. And his head and his hair were white as white wool, as snow, and his eyes as a flame of fire, and his feet like burnished brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So here we find out Yahushua is the Ancient of Days. Come, uh, Revelations 4, uh, verse 1. Come up here and I shall show you what has to take place after this. And immediately I came to be in the Ruach, and I saw a throne set in the heaven, and one set on the throne. Skip down to verse 11 there. It says, You are worthy, Yahuwah, to receive esteem and respect and power, for you have created all, and because of your desire they are and were created. So here we find out that the one on the throne is Yahuwah and the Creator. So Yahusha is Yahuwah incarnated and is the one sitting on the one throne. Okay. Uh, a lot of people say, uh, they like to say, uh, the Father, that Yahuwah, why did Yahusha say, that if, he would, if Yahusha is the Father, why did Yahusha say that the Father is greater? And the answer to that is simple, really. The Father, Yahushua said that the Father is greater because the Father is infinite in size, time, and power. Also, Yahushua knew he couldn't indwell us as a man, but could as the Ruach HaKadosh. And that's why he promised not to leave us orphans, and he would come back to comfort us. Thank you for watching, and remember to stay in love with Yahusha. Bonus feature time. From Yahushua Mashiach, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the sovereigns of the Eretz, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us sovereigns and priests to his Yahuwah and Father, to him be esteem and rule forever and ever. Amen. See, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the Eretz shall mourn because of him. Yes, amen. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all flock, among which the Ruach HaKadosh has made you overseers, to shepherd the assembly of Elohim, which he purchased, with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves shall come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves men shall arise, speaking distorted teachings, to draw away the Talamen after themselves. And all things are from Yahuwah who has restored us to favor with himself 
through Yahushua Mashiach and has given us the service of restoration to favor. That is, that Yahuwah was in Mashiach restoring the word to favor to the world to favor to himself, not reckoning their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of restoration to favor. Yahuwah was in the Mashiach. <clears throat> For even if there for even if there are so called mighty ones, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many mighty ones and many masters, for us there is one Yahuwah, the Father from whom all came, and from whom we live, and one master Yahushua Mashiach, through whom all came, and through whom we live. However, not all have this knowledge. Lacking knowledge because they are weak in the Ruach. Now, there is much else that Yahushua did. If every one of them were written down, I think that the world itself would not contain the written books. Amen. Majority is usually never right, folks. So join the minority called the Nazarene and be set apart to Yahuwah. Thank you for watching and remember to stay in love with Yahusha. So long everybody. Yahusha. Living.